gorgeous landscape. Have you ever seen so many trees? Where are you headed? North. Ah, myself as well. Spent much time up here? Fair bit. Not me. It is a long ride, isn't it? Very long. I'm so pleased you're here, Julia. You haven't been to a suffrage society meeting in quite some time. Well, one does get discouraged after years of protest resulting in no change. Mm. You seem in high spirits this morning. I spoke with George last night. He got a tip about his father from one of George Sr.'s associates. Is his father still wanted for murder by the Winnipeg police? Yes, but George hopes to get to him first, and with any luck, he'll sort it out and come home to me. Well, I wish him the best of luck. Oh, Marianne. Good morning, Julia. This is Kaji. I, uh, I trust you're both ready for the march on the legislature? Yes, of course. Oh, and since yellow is the color of the movement, I thought perhaps we could wear daffodils to the demonstration. A fine idea. <laughs> Everything all right, Marianne? Uh, would we be able to have a word after the meeting? I'm embarrassed to ask for help, but... I don't know where else to turn. I'm looking for my father. I'm looking for a friend. Looking for my... Freddy is a wonderful chap, but hasn't been in touch in a while, and I, I worry about him. Well, let's just say he can get into a mood now and then, and when he gets into a mood, he tends to get into a scrape, and... I'm hoping I'll find him soon. Timing couldn't be worse. My wife and I just bought a house. Listen, friend. Best to keep your mouth shut on this train. So he's been stabbed through the heart. Do you have a passenger list? No, not, not on this train. Well, this man's with the Winnipeg Police Force, and his killer's aboard this train. Police? Look, I'm a member of the Toronto Constabulary myself. I can offer assistance. No, no, no. I'll inform the local officials at the next stop. Well, we can't leave him here. This laboratory needs to be closed off. need a small kiss of the seat. I can get it. Well, that's all right. I'll manage. You should get back to the passengers. sitting here over there? Could be yes, could be no. Well, which is it? Last I seen him, he was heading for the back of the train. Is that the baggage car? Could be yes, could, could be, be no. I understand you could use my help, Mrs. Shaysworth. It's humiliating to admit, but 
My husband has deserted our family. I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. It's not that I miss him. I must say I don't. But the children and I will lose our lodgings. In cases like this, sometimes an intermediary can work out some kind of arrangement. And your husband has definitively stated that he will not support you and your children? Well, I'd ask him, but he's disappeared. And you believe he's at this men's club? It, yes, I, I have a photo, if it helps. She's already tried his place of work. He's a stockbroker at the exchange. Would you be kind enough to check his men's club, detective? I'll do what I can. Good morning. Detective William Murdoch, Toronto Constabulary. Are you Herman Chainsworth? The man himself. Some might consider it a tad early in the day to indulge. Some might pity the poor saps forced to hew to a conventional schedule. No, I do. Sir, I understand you have decided to desert your family. I'm not paying. Are you saying that you refuse to take responsibility for the welfare of your wife and your children? Why should I pay for the privilege of being henpecked day and night, year after year? <clears throat> Please, Herman, some decorum. Apologies, Mr. Mutz. Sir, you're not permitted in there. Isn't it just a baggage car? Yes, sir, but there are no passengers allowed for your safety. I understand. Apologies. the delegation to the legislature. The Premier refused to receive us. I mean, we made it as far as the foyer. But we did force him to listen to our demands. Uh, well, he listened, and he'll do nothing. I met with Mr. Shainsworth earlier today, and he refuses to pay to support his children. You couldn't convince him. He seemed quite defiant. I did, however, obtain his address, and I've passed that on to Mrs. Shainsworth. Really? Apparently a lodging house nearby. <phone rings> Detective Murdoch? Hello? Oh? Where? All right. What's going on? I'm afraid Mr. Shainsworth has been found murdered. Calm down. Look at him. Robber of whist to pass the time, is it, folks? Poker. The game's full up. That's some uh, lively stakes you're using there. A race. Did anybody notice there was a lawman on the train? Most of us don't take kindly to lawmen, if you know what I mean. Yes, that's why I say to be, to be aware on guard, if you will. Is that why you're back here? Because the porter's paid to keep people out. Well, as I said, I'm looking for a friend. I call. Yep, 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 yep. We're not there yet. This is my stop. So why don't you come along? I have a feeling I can help you find who you're looking for.
This is one trip you gotta pay for. Well, I did pay. I can show you my ticket. I'm not talking about the train. I'm talking about the trip to nowhere. Looks like your trip ends here. Brothers, leave off. Oh. Name's Forge. Don't you forget it. Now shut the hell up and come with me. What's your interest here? I don't like mess. And I don't like cleanup. And don't forget the rules. <laughs> All right, Forge. I can respect my elder. Forge? Forge Ferrar. Iron Scourge, they call me. Yeah! Oh. On foot from here! You heard him. Get the bus. I think we can talk now. What are you doing here? Came looking for you. Listen, a lawman was killed on that train, and he had this on him. That's not good. There's no time to lose if the police are this close. What are you doing here? I have to clear my name, George. I'm tracking the man who killed my business partner, Sidney McRae. So you didn't do it? Of course not. Sid was a friend, a banker who was staking my new project. A healing spa at Little Manitou Lake in Saskatchewan. That's your new scheme? A spa in Saskatchewan? It's the Dead Sea of Canada. The minerals in the water, lithium, sulfur, magnesium, they're therapeutic for all manner of ailments of body and mind. It does sound nice. It's an incredible opportunity. Sid was helping to raise more capital. It's dreadful what happened to him. What did happen to him? Starting to think you two know one another. Is this the friend you were looking for? Yes. Oh. Why didn't you say so? Move along. Nothing to see here. Grim place to breathe one's last. I was with Mr. Shainsworth only this morning. He was in high spirits of a sort. Murder weapon doesn't appear to have been discarded here. His trousers are unbuttoned. I believe he may have stopped to relieve himself in this alley. He was staying just next door. A predilection of the inebriated, I'm afraid. Yes, well, I can attest he began drinking early today. I heard that he had his back to his attacker when he was struck. And if he was intoxicated, his assailant would have had the advantage. I'll pay a visit to his club to reconstruct his movements. Oh, his wallet is here. It's empty. Do we believe he was robbed? Possibly. Although I wouldn't rule out the possibility of a more personal motive. Hmm. Welcome to nowhere. What is this place? A group of prospectors set it up when they hit a vein of silver. Or thought they had. This is mining country up here. Precious metals are magnetic for big dreamers. I'm surprised the Iron Scourge is so fond of flights of fancy. <laughs> You'll find I'm full of surprises. Most of them nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. It happens now. We gotta meet the mayor. He decides on who stays and who goes. Frank Henshaw. This is Buck. Buck. Is that a last name? Uh, Buck Huck. Uh, Huckles. Hucklesworth. Hucklesberry. Huckleberry. Huckleberry. Well, Mr. Huckleberry. Just call me Buck. Buck. Most current folk who live here, ghosts, I call them. Or retired, or reformed, or plain need to disappear for one reason or another. And there's rules, too. 
No real names, settle your own scores, but no killing alive. Well, I think I can handle that. Someone's got to vouch for you. That'd be me. Sign here. Son, you don't know what you've walked into here. But I'm touched you came looking. Well, of course I did. I was worried. Why do the police think you killed your business partner? We'd argued publicly. Sid was wavering on our project. His colleagues were pushing him into investing in local real estate instead. So he was backing out? Not at all. In fact, I was going to meet him to confirm our deal on the day he was killed. But he was dead when I got to his office bludgeoned and the timber bonds he'd promised to invest were gone why did you run you must have known how that would look i panicked i'd been seen on the way in so i slipped away since then i've laid low and traced the bonds to this strange place is that the whole truth i know you struggle with these dark moods it isn't like that I've taken the waters all over the continent, and it has changed my life. I'm changed. Then what about the McCray file? The detectives found your cane in the room, along with your finger marks on the murder weapon, the, the, the stone paperweight. Well, certainly. I'd handled it on many occasions. Tyndall stone, full of fossils. A remarkable specimen. Yes, well, remarkably deadly, as it turns out. There was another set of unknown finger marks on the weapon. Perhaps we can use that to identify the real killer, if we can even find ourselves a suspect. No need. I found an ally here, the manager of the local drinking hall. Polly has promised to help me find the man I'm tracking. Oh, you're going to love her. Back. I'd like you to meet Polly. Dorothy! George! Father, that's Dorothy Earl. She's a murderous psychopath. She's using you to get to me. Father? Well, there's no need to overreact. Neither of us knew each other's true identity. Every ghost in nowhere has an alias. No, I don't believe you. You always said you weren't finished with me. Maybe I'm interested in starting over. Amelia's gone. And though I'd blame you, George, the fact is, my sister was very troubled, and I've put it in the past, and I am committed to helping Forge. Maybe she deserves a second chance. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry for your loss. The finality of death can sometimes summon unresolved feelings. I know my feelings for my miserable louse of a husband very well. I'm only worried about telling the children that they no longer have a father. If I may, where were you earlier today? I was at a suffragist rally that I helped organize. I've campaigned for years to get women the vote, and it can't happen soon enough. Too much in this world depends upon the whims of men. Feeling better after a night's sleep? No. Listen, we cannot trust Dorothy. She is a criminal and a liar. So is everyone else around here. Besides, Polly at least already knows who we are, and she wants to help. Yeah, help us into an early grave, more like. Uh, Look, we could leave this place now. You could turn yourself in if you would help plead your case. George, no one will believe me innocent. I'm a fugitive. And I'm the only one who's absolutely certain I didn't do it. I need to find the real killer. There's another clue in the McCray file. He had a meeting scheduled right before he was to meet with you. A man by the name of Eugene Flett. The police ever interview him? No, they couldn't find him. Seems like a reasonable suspect. Well, that's the spirit. Between the three of us, we'll get our man. Sorry of us. Oh. Running a successful establishment in a town that does not exist is harder than you might think. 
Well, it's the same about your business, Rose. What about the help you promised us? Patience. Young buck. Oh. Ghosts have arrived in the last three months. This is Clutch! He used to be a thief. Clutch, this is Forge, and Buck. They have some questions for you. Mayor said we'd have no truck with questions. Yes, and as the mayor's right hand, I am telling you to answer anyway. Have you spent any time in Winnipeg? No. Nah. What about timber bonds? Have you seen any circulating around nowhere? If I had her, I would have stolen her for sure. Is that it? Well, that wasn't terribly enlightening. My whip! I told you he was a thief. Well, now, if it isn't Forge and his best bud. Just, uh, cleaning some bullets, are we? Polly said to help you. So start talking. We're wondering if you've spent any time in Winnipeg, or do you know if any of the other ghosts have? No, indeed. But then I don't ask a lot of questions. I like living too much for that. I like your hat. Popular style out west. Shot a man for it. Perhaps he was from out west. What about Eugene Flett? Do you know anybody by that name? What a coincidence. That was the name of the man with the hat. <laughs> Hello there. Are you a Yankee? Yeah. I hear you're a former pickpocket. Sure, I've been a dipper. What of it? I've always admired fine finger work. You know, real hard to make a living once the coppers know your face. You're always running. I wonder did you know a friend of mine? Name is Sid, out in the peg. No, I ain't never been out west. Terrific. <laughs> Marvelous, what you show me. I must have dipped some interesting things here or nowhere. Nah, not much scratch around these parts. Though I uh, almost looked at some uh, funny looking paper money from Mayor Henshaw this week. Lumber bond or some such. Thank you so much. So we know that the murder occurred shortly after Mrs. Shainsworth learned where her husband was staying. Julia told me that Mrs. Shainsworth did not meet up with the suffragette delegation, even though she was meant to lead it. But she was seen at the men's club. Apparently, she pushed past the doorman and argued with her husband before being ejected. Shainsworth himself left shortly thereafter. And perhaps he went straight back to his lodgings where he was accosted by someone in the alley. By someone named Mrs. Shainsworth? Let's see what Mayor Henshaw has to say about these timber bonds. I don't see how Henshaw could have killed Sid. I thought he'd been here for years. Mayor! Mayor Henshaw! He's dead. What? Hey! What did you do to the mayor? Hey! Hey, they killed him! You'll pay for this. I thought there was no killing in nowhere! Hey! <sighs> That's Ford's whip around his neck. This is what Mayor Henshaw didn't want. Another lawless town of bandits settling scores. You're making a mistake. We're innocent and we can prove it. He's the one who stole Forge's whip. No, we got eyes. We see what's what. I'll show you what it means to be a ghost. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Well, what about the rule? No killing in nowhere. Hey, hey, hands off these two. By order of the.
the mayor. Go. You're welcome. Let's go. Inside. She planned this. She planned to kill Henshaw so she could blame us. It's sheer luck that you were after the same person. Well, they couldn't have overpowered Henshaw. Anyone here could have done it. Have you ever considered she might truly be reformed? Father, you don't understand the half of it. This woman is rotten to the core. The things that she has done to me, the things she's done to my wife, her brain is, is, is broken. Is that what you think of me? People can heal. They can learn. Are you honestly telling me you think people are incapable of change, George? I was going to finger mark that whip. Oops. I know you're behind this. It is flattering how much credit you give me. You know, Polly was with us nearly the whole time. Nearly being the operative world. I'm not guilty of anything. Have a look around, as much as you like. Please tell me where you went after you confronted your husband at the men's club. Did you wait for him outside of his lodgings? No. I went home alone to see which of my belongings I could sell to make up the rent. I hope for your sake that you're telling me the truth. But I have a feeling that you haven't finished lying to me yet. May I have a moment alone with my client, please? Is there something you're not telling me? Be honest so I can help you. Not a match. Mayor Hinchot's finger marks don't match those on the paperweight that killed Sidney McRae. So your friend's killer is still out there. Then how did Hinshaw get hold of the timber bonds? Maybe Yankee lied to us at Dorothy's behest. If Polly Dorothy really did kill the mayor, then I've put you in terrible danger. You should go. I'm not leaving you. I don't deserve your help. I should have listened. I should have believed you. It's not your fault. She's fooled many people. And I came to help you, whether you were innocent or not. That's what family does. You'll make a fine father one day, George. The kind I wish I'd been for you. Thank you. We have the finger marks for whoever killed McCray. If there was just some way to check them against every suspect in town. I've got an idea. <laughs> you must be preoccupied with mayoral matters now. It's a shame you're tied to the bar all night. It's impossible to find good help around here. Well, I'd like to buy the entire bar a drink. <laughs> I'll play Berman for the evening. I am grateful that you came to our defense earlier. I'll help too. I'm gonna need a new trade if I stick around. Wait, you're staying? Yeah. Well, it suits me fine. Just, um, make sure you water down the drinks or else it'll cost me in chairs. <laughs> hey, you are, sir. Thank you. Sit with us, Forge. Don't mind if I do. What are we celebrating? Ah, uh, there's a mill in the next railway town. Shut down without enough folks to run it. I thought we could get it going, get some jobs for folks around here. Remarkable. I'm done messing with the law. I just want to live in peace. As do we all. I hear you. You know, the first of us in nowhere were cons running off from work games. Escaped prisoners. Forced to build the railway. Nowhere is a fascinating experiment. Freedom, self-governance, and the potential means of peaceable industry and rehabilitation. What do you know about all of that? I've dabbled in city planning myself, imagining new ways of living, 
in bringing people together. Of course, I had to cut down any bureaucrat who got in my way. If they said, show me your permit, I said, permit me to introduce you to my business partner, Mr. Colt. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell the detective what you just told me. I, I didn't kill Herman. But there is something I haven't confessed. Our marriage wasn't legal. Oh? Mr. Shainsworth walked out on his previous wife years ago. But he didn't divorce her. With Herman dead, I stood to collect nothing, not to mention the damage to my reputation. Why did you persist in this arrangement? I was young, and I fancied myself in love. And before long, I had children to protect. I'll look into who else may have had motive to harm him. Perhaps someone at his work. I've heard the stock exchange can be a cutthroat business. It's true. But Herman had a talent for making enemies everywhere. Imagine a saltwater lake fed by an underground spring. The water is full of minerals. Have you ever been swimming in a saltwater lake? You actually float. It's a bit of heaven on earth. <laughs> I found a match. It's Brewis. He's the one who killed him, McCray. He's gone. We can get him in the morning. I'm afraid I've, I've had a few too many sets tonight. I thought you only ever pretended to drink. There's no fool in this crowd. told you, Dorothy Ernst has known who you really are all along. The woman who I spoke to on the telephone, she said she was your assistant. She said her name was Aileen Smart. Aileen Smart? I don't know anyone by that name. I never told a soul I was coming. Last time you threatened me or anybody I care about. What are you so worked up about, George? I'm not threatening anyone. I'm working. You lured me here to nowhere. Weren't you looking for your father? Weren't you concerned for him? I could have hardly have given you my real name. You would not have believed me. Don't, don't twist things around. What are you going to do? Are you going to kill me? Of course not. But I am going to bring you to justice.
humor me, Dorothy. Why don't you two take this outside? Make it a real duel. It's almost dawn. Give the boy a fighting chance. Aren't you the mayor now? Show these ghosts your power and your fairness. That is an amazing idea. <laughs> Pistols at dawn! I will reload the weapons. <laughs> you will, will you? Dueling rules still apply, after all. I am the only second here, but you can watch me do it. is better than none. I truly admire your vision for nowhere. I've always been one for building things. Hmm. The world never goes easy on dreamers. And even harder on women, I'd guess. Charm. Right. You know what to do, my son. think of anything. I managed to find a broker who recognized the photograph. He says Shanesworth was dismissed from his firm weeks ago, and he asked if he owed me money as well. Shanesworth had other debts. It appears so. Some of his creditors came calling, and they weren't happy. So he had other enemies beside his wife, and if his creditors came looking for him here. That means they didn't know where he was staying. Who else knew of his temporary lodgings, then? Mr. Mupps. Detectives, you keep showing up here. Looking for a membership sponsor? Oh, no, I don't think this is a club we'd care to join. I understand you like to extend favors from time to time, Mr. Mupps. You loaned a great deal of money to Mr. Shanesworth. What of it? He'd lost money on the market, including mine. He said with some more, he could get it all back. But he didn't. You wanted repayment. You overheard me trying to get funds out of him for his family. And you feared Shanesworth would soon be repaying other debts before yours and tried to move to the front of the line. No, no, sir. Oh, uh, perhaps you lost your temper when you learned there was little hope of getting your money back? No. You overheard where he was staying. You waited for him outside of his lodgings, and when he stepped into the alley, you attacked him. You are under arrest, Mr. Mupps. I will drop this kerchief on the count of three. That will be the signal to fire. One. Two. Ha! No. No! No, no, no! no. What about order? You're looking in the wrong place for that, Dorothy. This is nowhere, remember? No. Tie her off. No! Oh, my gosh. You were never in any real danger. You took her bullets using Yankee sleight of hand trick. I'm a man of many talents. Right now, we have to get to the train and get Dorothy to justice. What about Brillis? We'll have the authorities return for him. Right now, the most important thing is to get this menace of a woman behind bars. Agreed. Oh, oh, thank you, Mama! We have to get out of here! Just leave him! Go, go, get go! Get away again! Get by us sometime! Pardon me? No! No! no. What a terribly terrific escape! The town is completely deserted. Anyone that was there is long gone. But they'll find them. Thank you, Detective. And I appreciate you liaising with the Winnipeg Police Force. The evidence of the finger-marked glass and the sworn affidavit of one constable, George Crabtree, was what was needed to convince them. 
I've even communicated with the bank that issued the timber bonds, and Sid had already put them in my name. So he truly did believe in the project? Of course. And there's still a good sum remaining. I'm off to Saskatchewan to take the waters and to get this spa off the ground. Well, best of luck. I suppose it'll be a while before I see you again. Hard to say. We crab trees could hardly be called predictable. <laughs> you keep yourself out of trouble now. I'll take that as a solemn order, son. Farewell. George. Effie. Perhaps we should leave these two alone? I am never letting you out of my sight again. No, don't worry. I'm not going nowhere. <laughs>